And then we got the uh, people who like Jill Stein. No, nobody said they really like Jill Stein. No, so we, no, I like her. Well, I like her too, but... Except thing- I was, did you listen to the town hall she had the other day? Uh, no, actually, I didn't. Do you listen to any of these speeches? No, I just talk off the top of my head. That's what I thought. You know. No, you, no, you listen to the uh, roundup on MSNBC. I've seen, uh, you know, Gary Johnson, you know, and I've heard him. And I, I tell you, I've heard Jill Stein also. I mean, Jill Stein, a lot of what she says is, you know, almost verbatim uh, Bernie uh, Sanders. But she has no money. She really doesn't have any organization, unfortunately. It's hard for her to get her message out there. Yeah. You know. And but, all, yeah, you know, I told my wife to listen to her because so, she never heard of her. I said, listen to her. She's a doctor. She's well-educated. Her uh, vice presidential candidate, her vice president is controversial. So I said, listen to him. So she put her on at 9 o'clock. My wife said by 9.10 she was fast asleep. She's the most boring woman she's ever heard. Well, nobody said she was a great speaker, okay? I mean, uh, look, you know, if you want to be wooed with a great speaker, you'll listen to Donald Trump because he knows how to stir up an audience. I'll yeah. give him that much. Yeah, but uh, and her, uh, do you know what her vice presidential candidate is known for? I don't for? even know the person's name. He looks like he might be a Muslim. I'm not sure. His last name is Barack. I forget his last name. I'm not sure. But he made a speech. He called, he called uh, I think, people like uh, our buddy, uh, the president, all the blacks, Uncle Tom's, in a speech. Caused a lot of controversy. Well. And he said, you took it out of context. Yeah, that, that's, that's please. That's like Trump. Uh, doesn't anybody understand sarcasm anymore? I was never being serious. You took it out of context. What can I tell you? You know, you could tell me that uh, since we're starting a little strangely today, we've been on for 17 minutes and 35 seconds only. Sure, it's not an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like we've yelled at each other. Dr. Mark and I don't actually probably see more eye to eye than we would admit on things, but not as, but not on the air. That's definitely not on the air. Well, I mean, truth be told, you are more conservative in certain aspects. Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, f- fiscally conservative than than I am. I am. Uh, more of a moderate to progressive, you know, leaning way toward the progressive side, you know. Yeah, my feeling uh, is if you're going to do something, you have to have money to do it. Well, it's... That's the end of it. And, well, it's it's kind of tough, you know. I mean... Uh, Other countries do it. Obama doubled the... Uh, oh, by the way, did you hear that? Uh, I, I believe... I think it's AARP, said they're pulling out of Obamacare in 2017. Everybody's pulling out of AARP, at the, the largest one. They're all pulling out. Well, AARP well, was never in it. No? No. They, and I don't know who it was, but I know a major... Aetna, uh, Aetna, the largest insurance company. Every large insurance company pulled out. They said the way it's going to be, there's going to be one or two companies... Maybe in the exchange, and they'll be able to do whatever they want. It'll be like a monopoly. They'll they'll charge they'll, whatever it's, you know. Well, they're already saying that the money, that the uh, it costs now, what costs uh, before Obamacare, what costs fifteen hundred now costs five thousand. So where's that twenty five hundred dollars we're all going to save? <clears throat> you know, so that was a bomb. I think Obama, you know, Obama's uh, approval rating is still pretty hard, but I think... Yeah, it's at 50%. I think Although, been, I don't know, let's wait and see how it is after... Uh, all this has been happening, yeah. Well, no, with him, primarily, it's, you know, the fact that he's still vacationing and hasn't made a trip to Louisiana, you know? That, the hostage, pay, pay for hostages, that's a big yeah. deal. 
Uh, I don't care what they say. I know what it looks like. You know, any fool could tell you what it looks like. You know. Well, they they, they didn't want to use. Listen, if you're not going to do something unless you do this, it's ransom. You're holding somebody hostage till they do it. There's no, uh, no matter what you want to call it. Mark, I'm not letting you go home tonight unless you give me a dollar and I hold you here. You're a hostage. You can call it. I'm pivoting it. What am I pivoting it? I could get on your nerves until you finally just kick me out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just a fact. It's You know, you can call it whatever you want. You can say, oh, we owe the money. Whatever you want to say. But the bottom line, you did it right. You know, two planes at the same time. Boom, 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 you know, perfect timing on marked airplane. Could have been a, you know, why do we have to uh, rent the airplane? Or, you know, lease the yeah, airplane? but you know something? Reagan did it too. What for the Iranian with the hostages? with the Iranian hostages, you know? How did he do it? Because a couple of months after that, he sent tow missiles over to Iran, special missiles, okay? And that was all part of the deal. Let them go and let them go as soon as I'm sworn in, okay? And I will send you, and that's what he did. A couple of months later, he sent them those tow missiles. That was all prearranged. Well, you know what? Also to make Carter look bad, you know. Listen, you didn't have to work hard to make Carter look bad. He was the nicest guy in the world. He's done so much good after his presidency, but he just wasn't a good president. <laughs> Nobody respected him. I think him. he was... Most productive of all the, the, the past presidents, when he left office, he did the most, I think, I said he's people. great. After, yeah, I said he's great. I'm not talking about any great foundation like Clinton. Okay. He, he went out and he hustled and he worked his ass off. The uh, uh, rebuilding homes in, in devastated areas and the work he did on the guinea worm in Africa. And clean water, you know? Yeah, he, he did great. He did great. I'm just, yeah, he was. Nine, and he was a gentleman. Yes, he was. And maybe that's one of the problems. You can't be a gentleman as a president. No, you can't be a gentleman in politics. Well, that's the same thing. You know, you have to, uh, I mean, Obama... One of Obama's biggest problems was when he really lost control is when he say when he drew that red line in Syria. <clears throat> I know. You just don't say, I'm drawing a red line and you cross that. I mean, what does Syria got to lose, you know? And we lost face, Yeah, I mean, basically. Yeah. Everybody said, okay, we can do whatever we want. They're not going to do anything about it. ISIS wasn't worried about anything. Nobody's worried about it. He was, but Obama is an excellent role model for uh, fatherhood. Okay, and... Oh, did you see they caught his daughter smoking grass? Big deal. I know, it is a big deal. It's a league, it's, listen, he, he's the head of the government. The federal government considers marijuana illegal. He said he smoked in college, so what? Just say, but but he didn't inhale. Oh no, that was caught. Uh, that was uh, no, that Clinton, was uh, Clinton. 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 Didn't, yeah, I didn't inhale, but I got high anyway. Hey, listen, John Johnson said. Uh, see, that's that's the whole controversy. The showing you not. Clinton says Powell encouraged the private email, and he said, "No way, Jose." He said, "You have to have pride. You have to have." Secure email. It's all. It's like I don't know what it is. You know, all she had to say in the beginning, I put them in there. I shouldn't have done it. it Listen, was a big mistake. General Powell has no recollection of the dinner conference. I said he did write former Secretary Clinton an email 
Remember the scribe is exuded. I said more than once, the American people are a very forgiving yeah, people. And he also said how it has vastly improved. Yeah. Uh, so, the, you know, I said more than once, the bottom line is the American people are very forgiving people. If you lie about something and you fess up and you say, look, you know, I lied. I'm sorry. Well, she didn't have to lie. All she had to do when they asked her, did you, did you do this? Yes, I did. It would have been, you know, nobody would have really had too much to say. She, everybody would have known she did it, and that was the end of it. But then she holds back 33,000 pieces of email, and, of course, the, the FBI said, guess what? They weren't personal emails, the ones she erased and scrubbed. Like she said. So that's that's a little scary. All right, we've got a phone call. Let's see who's calling. Good evening, and who's calling? Oh, how you doing, man? Uh, this is Naj. How you doing, brother? Hey, how are you? I'm all right. How y'all doing? Well, we're arguing like hell. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. No, we're just talking about all, you know, like, just say to him that Clinton, if she just in the beginning said, listen, I did this and that's the end of it. But now she had to go erase 33,000 emails that had a lot of uh, stuff that was. Uh, you know, if they if they know. could just learn from their mistakes, if her husband didn't say. I didn't have sex with that woman and then. Re reiterate that time and again until he finally said, well, yes, I did. If he just would have come out and said, you know, I made a mistake, I really apologize. If she just would have come out and said, you know, I made a mistake with the emails, um, I, I apologize to the American people, because the American people are a forgiving people. They know that human beings are flawed, and especially but, uh, politicians. Well, I don't think any of them felt they made a mistake. They, they feel they're above the law. No, they knew they made a mistake, but you're right about them thinking they thought they were above the law, that they wouldn't yeah. get caught. Yeah. Or if they get caught, what would happen is exactly what happened. The FBI would drop it. Well, you know what happened? Yeah. I, they they yeah. just... No, listen, you yeah. love this, Naj. They just showed Bill embracing Hillary on stage somewhere. <coughs> and they were really very, very, very this is strong hugs. Yeah, this is And I think he forgot who it was. And he said, Monica, I really miss you. <laughs> so what were we going to say, Naj? Nah, man. No, nah, they practice that for hours, man. They have to show uh, some type of compassion. And I know. And all of those things are photo opportunities <laughs> because they live a manicured, powerful life. But when you get into that intersection of power and wealth, uh, yeah, there, is, there are no consequences. There is a whole different level. Uh, in America, as far as the justice system, criminal system, whatever you want to, you know, name it. Uh, that's the way the game goes in America, and most people don't realize it, but that's the way it's set up. Uh, Hillary, after losing to Barack Obama, she was she was going to do everything she could to make sure she didn't lose again. So I think the whole server idea was because she didn't trust the Obama administration, <laughs> and she was not going to allow them to sink her uh, chance to win this time. So I, I look at it. I look at it from that standpoint, and those are the little lies to me. The email server, uh, you know, all the other stuff. The big lies are I'm going to get this economy going. I'm going to bring the jobs back. Those kind of lies are the big lies that we really should be concerned with. But well, it, did it, you? It is what it is, man. We got two of the worst candidates ever running. So did you? Did you? Do? Did you hear Trump today when he was trying to woo the African American uh, vote? He says, <laughs> first of all. All he did was was talk trash to them. He said, "You got fifty nine percent unemployment. Of your, said, of, your of kids, the... your kids aren't learning." He said, "You got the worst education system in the ghetto areas." They're talking about he was in Detroit, you know. And he's and then he says, "So what do you got to lose? Give me a chance, you know." He said, yeah, "Basically, what? the Democrats have screwed <laughs> you over already." How much worse yeah, could it be? I mean, it was funny. It, it was funny to hear him say that, but the reality was he wasn't talking to black people. He was talking to moderate Republicans who may think that he's racist. So he was appealing to them 
and giving them a talking point so they can say, well,